we're going to do a very well-known experiment called the elephant's toothpaste. We're using concentrated hydrogen peroxide, as you can see. We're going to put some of that in our five litre conical, um, and then I'll explain the rest as we go along. There are lots of videos on YouTube of this already, so we thought we'd explain, or try and explain, why it's so spectacular. And of course, Brady filmed it in slow motion, which allows you to see quite a lot of the detail as the reaction develops. The final ingredient to our reaction is a saturated solution of potassium iodide. So this is what's going to make this reaction go. So at this point, I think, Neil, you need to move that way because I'm going to very rapidly be going that way as well once this has been added in. So, are you ready? Three, two, one. The reaction is a reaction of hydrogen peroxide. I've got rather a crude model here. It is H2O2, two hydrogens, two oxygens. The key part about this molecule is that the bond between the two oxygens is rather long and rather weak. You may remember that when you break bonds, you have to put energy into a molecule. And when you make bonds, you get energy back. The overall energy that you have from a reaction, that's whether heat comes out or you have to put heat in, depends on the balance between the energy needed to break the bonds and the energy needed to make them. So in this case, the reaction is overall that two molecules of H2O2 form two molecules of water and one molecule of O2. And O2, oxygen, has a double bond between the two oxygen atoms. So if you look at it overall, all you have done is to break two single bonds and make one double bond. Because in both of them, you have four OH bonds, four here and four here. And usually, and the key to this reaction, is that two single bonds need less energy to break them than you get back when you form one double bond. That is, the double bond is more than twice as strong as two single bonds. So you're breaking two single bonds between oxygen atoms, making one double bond between two oxygen atoms, and getting energy out. And this is what makes the reaction work. Now, like most reactions, you need some energy to get it started because hydrogen peroxide does not spontaneously fall apart at room temperature. So in this reaction, in the demonstration, you have hydrogen peroxide, a bit of soap to cause foam. A little bit of soap is just going into there. Is that just like detergent or? Yeah, just, just li if washing up liquid, liquid detergent, whatever you want to call it. Sometimes people put in a bit of colouring so it looks a bit more dramatic, the foam. And then you have to drop in a catalyst which reduces the amount of energy needed to break the first few bonds. Now, the final ingredient to our reaction is a saturated solution of potassium iodide. There's a choice of different catalysts you can use. Sam used potassium iodide. The potassium is not important, it's the iodide itself, which can lower the energy needed to break the OO bond. And because all molecules at room temperature have a certain amount of energy, with the catalyst, there is enough energy in the system to get the reaction started. Three, two, one. Now, once the reaction starts, each molecule that reacts gives out some heat. So the temperature rises, Chemical reactions go faster as the temperature rise, so more molecules react, more heat comes out, and you get a runaway process. So the reaction goes faster and faster and faster. So what he's doing now is actually using the oxygen of the foam to keep that splint lit. If you look at the reaction products, oxygen is a gas, so you've got a liquid that is producing a gas which has a much bigger volume than the liquid. And also, because the reaction mixture is heating up, you're also producing some steam. 
that's the vapour of water, though the volume of steam is probably much less than the volume of the gas. The material needs to expand because the gas is at room temperature, so it expands and by having soapy solution you can make a foam so people can actually see the gas expanding. The reaction would work just as well without the soap, but then you wouldn't see the oxygen coming out. There is a second very important and totally physical aspect to this reaction, and that is that the reaction is done in a conical flask with sloping sides to a relatively small diameter neck. And you will see the same thing in many of the demonstrations on YouTube. So what happens is that as the foam rises, because the tube is getting narrower, the speed at which it goes up has to accelerate. And so it comes up with really quite a high speed and shoots up into the air. And of course, as you get the column of the foam going up, there's nothing supporting it. So when it runs out of momentum, gravity makes it collapse down again. I was really excited to see the foam overcoming our little camera at the side. So now we can actually demonstrate that this conical flask is important because Sam wanted to do the reaction in one of our big test tubes, our barking dog tubes, which have straight sides. She thought it'd be really spectacular. Neil thought it would be a waste of time. In fact, they were both wrong. It was not bad, but not nearly as dramatic as in a conical flask. Wow. All right, you were right. Okay, you were right. The takeaway message of this demonstration is that the underlying chemistry provides the energy to get the reaction going, but you need a catalyst to set it off. And then the build-up of heat and the conical flask gets it to go with a real whoosh. So next time, when you see the elephant's toothpaste, think of the science not the clowning of the people who are doing it. Mm -hmm.